The Ruchtersveld as a bioregion outcompetes places like the Amazon, Congo, Madagascar. It just blows my mind that a place that's so dry and harsh is so abundant in life. For me, this is the Garden of Eden. But the past 13 years, over the whole bioregion, 85% biomass died. If this can happen in such a short time, what will be left without the intervention? So I'm Peter van Wijk. I'm born, raised in the Ruchtersveld and been studying the plants of the Ruchtersveld for the past 22 years. The felt has always been my happy space and my go-to space. The wonder, the beauty, the ecology. For me, it was always magic. So I'm Domiti Lorraine Wando, and I work for the South African National Biodiversity Institute as a Threatened Species Program Manager, where we work out which species are threatened with extinction. I have a network of people across South Africa that I work with, but Peter van Weyck stands out as the most exceptional. He has monitored the plants of the Richtersveld region, and that's not a small number, there's over a thousand endemics. It's well documented to be the richest desert ecosystem in the whole entire world. In an area that's about 0.01% the size of the Amazon forest, there are more species of plants than you would find in all of Europe and has the highest percentage of localized endemic species for a single habitat for the whole planet. I never imagined that there would come a moment in my life that more than half of that would disappear. If a place like this where species are so localized endemic, so uniquely adapted to microclimates, to the specific conditions in the environment, should there be as little as one degree Celsius rise in temperature, it would be catastrophic for species. We witness a rise in temperature of more than four degrees Celsius on average for the landscape. I have had the experience of my own son and my nephew holding a tree, this beautiful, magnificent tree and this amazing Richtersveld landscape. And that tree's dead. With the loss of plants came the loss of reptiles, of rodents, and with that, our raptor and snake populations, it just completely collapsed. If we experience anything like this within the next two to three years, I promise you, we will see the biggest extinction in the past 30,000 years on a planet here in the Richtersveld. And I don't want to live to see that. We are needing to ensure that we have the genetic material conserved. So he's personally gone and found the funding to create these special grow houses for these plants so that we have the genetic material available to save them. This seed bank and botanical garden is crucial because it's a backup. It's the only backup that there are for many of the species. And should something happen to them, then at least one have material that you can use to establishing a species back in habitat. If it wasn't for a facility like this, a lot of species already would have been gone. He always makes sure that we collect seed, which has got genetic diversity. He's got now the most important collections in the world for these endemic species. Each of these species is unique and has just the same rights as us humans to be here. There's enough people taking care of people and it's only a handful of people out of billions on the planet that really cares about the environment. Someone really close to me also taught me that in, in this harshness of this landscape, when you look at something like a flower, we would, would think, you know, flower is just something pretty, but it isn't. It's there with a purpose, and it's, the purpose is for tomorrow, regardless of how hard and difficult it is around it. 
and that gives me a lot of hope. It's not impossible to respond to the climate crisis and we need to work with nature to not lose the incredible diversity that has come from thousands and millions of years of evolution. This whole concept of we are a higher being, it's a strange thing. I mean, the environment is so much bigger than us. 